Why did Paul say that the gospel brings salvation to the Jew first and then to the Gentile? In the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 16, Paul writes, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. You see, the gospel is intended for all people, but uh, chronologically the gospel message was first revealed to the Jewish people before it was revealed to the Gentiles, that is uh, the non-Jewish people. And the Jews are God's chosen people. As the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy uh chapter Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse uh, 6 to 7 it says this clearly about the Jews it says for thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth this is to the Jews and verse 7 says The Lord did not send his love upon you nor choose you because you are more in number than any people for you are the fewest of all people. So they are beloved they are God's chosen people the Jews. And through the Jews God demonstrated his love and holiness to the world. And uh we see this one in the in the in the book of Romans chapter 4 uh, 9 uh, verse 4 to 5. It says who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning flesh Christ came you see the point there is is there theirs is the adoption to sonship theirs is the divine glory the covenant the receiving of the law the temple worship and the promises theirs are the patriarchs and from them it is traced the human ancestry of the messiah in simple terms it was this, it, it was uh, through the seed of abraham that all people on earth would be blessed acts 3:25 it says you are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which god made with our fathers saying unto abraham and in thy seed shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed you see it is through the jewish nation that the whole world is blessed what kind of blessing is that <laughs> through salvation because it is it is through that that we get salvation through the seed from the lineage of abraham that we get the messiah jesus christ coming and us getting the redemption from our sins Now that promised blessing came through Jesus Christ as explained in Galatians chapter 3 verse 16 it says now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made he said not and to seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed you see which is Christ so the seed of Abraham is uh, basically that seed which is <laughs> Jesus Christ who came to redeem us so the blessing came from the seed of Abraham all right <clears throat> and Jesus was born as a Jew under the law fulfilled the Jewish law perfectly and died as a once for all sacrifice on behalf of all who would put their faith in him Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 It says but when the fullness of the time was come God sent forth his, time, his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and also Hebrews chapter uh, 9 verse 14 to 15 it tells us this it says how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Mm-hmm. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Does that make some sense to you? Is it making some sense? And also 
let's also see Hebrews 9:23. Uh, we can read all the way to 28 and uh, I show you exactly the picture of what Jesus came to do. Now listen this carefully. It's very important. Verse 23 of Hebrews 9, it says, It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with this, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than this. Mm -hmm. Okay, what? For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Okay, I'll explain after this. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. Every year they are entering the priests with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once, look at that word, you can even underline that word if you're reading with me. But now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now, friends, if this is not once saved, always saved, I don't know what it is. Look at that verse 26 again. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, now Jesus did what? Once he uh, uh, but now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself Jesus put away sin he took out all the sin which was in the world by the sacrifice of himself why look at verse 27 and it is appointed unto men once to die but after this judgment so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall appear. He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now, brethren, even before I go back to the topic, let me just explain this so clearly. Jesus, he entered once into the holy place. You, you remember uh, the priests back in the days, they could enter the temple over and over with bloods of bulls and cows each and every day whenever people sin because the blood of cows and bulls and goats could not take away sin. It was only covering sin for a while. But when Jesus came, he entered once, gave his blood. Not only, he did not even enter into a, into an, a temple here down or an altar here on earth. He entered into the altar in heaven and poured out his blood as an atonement for us. And he died for us once. You see, go uh, goats and cows and all that can die many times. They can die, they cover sin, you do another sin, another cow dies, another bull dies, another you know uh, sheep dies and all that. But for men, it is appointed for man to die once. And after that, judgment so friends let me ask you one thing if you say you died with christ then you died once right so if you died once and you lie today does that make you an unbeliever have you backslidden no you've only lost your relationship with god you are just you, you're just quenching the Holy Spirit. He's there, but he's just quenched. You cannot lose your salvation, friends. You can't. It's not possible. Why? Because Jesus died once. And now we died with him. When you believe the gospel, you died with Christ. Okay? You died with Christ and you died once. You're not going to be dying every day when you, you've, you've uh, done something wrong. No, oh God, please now save me again. Uh, how many times is Jesus going to die? How many times is he... Uh, do, do you want to make Jesus like uh, those bulls and heifers that enter every day uh, into the holy place to try and atone for the sins of people? Are you trying to level the blood of Jesus with the blood of goats and sheep? Are you trying to make Jesus be like, uh, you see? No. 
Jesus died once. And after that, he said, it is finished. Everybody has been forgiven in the whole world. But then you can ask, oh, Keith, then if we are all forgiven in the whole world, then why are people going to hell? It is because of one thing, unbelief. You see, salvation is all about coming to the knowledge of the truth. Coming to the knowledge that you are forgiven. If you don't come to the knowledge, if you don't understand that you're forgiven, then you will die in your sins. But if you come to the realization that, oops, I am forgiven, I was forgiven 2,000 years ago, and you receive that forgiveness by faith, then my friends, you will not go to hell. You're saved, sealed, and sanctified. But people are going to hell because of unbelief. They don't want to believe that I was forgiven because they want to say, oh, I, I, I need to do something. And no, no, Jesus can't just forgive me for free. I need to pay for this. Salvation is free. It's a free gift. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift of God. Not of works. Lest anyone should boast. It is a free gift. Salvation is free. Let nobody sell it to you. It's all about just believing that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He took away your sin. Remember when the apostle, uh, 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 not, not apostle, I mean John the Baptist. When John the Baptist was baptizing and he saw Jesus coming, he shouted and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hmm, who takes away. So if Jesus is that lamb, he was coming to be sacrificed and his sacrifice, his blood would be so powerful that it will not cover the sin. It would take it away. It would take it away. There's no longer sin now. It is finished. When Jesus, just before he died, he said, it is finished. The payment for sin has been finished. Nobody else is going to enter the holy place with any more blood. It's over. I've taken away the sin. And I've been and I've been buried. And I'm going to rise again. When Jesus rose, he defeated death for our sake. Now we can say for sure, vividly, I am a new creature. I'm not old. The old creature is gone. The old is gone and the new has come. And the one who lives in me is not me. It is Christ who lives in me. So when Satan is trying to tell you you're backslidden, tell him, oh, oh, Satan, you're talking to a dead man. I died 2,000 years ago. And now the one who lives in me is Christ. The Apostle Paul said, it is Christ who lives in me. It is not I who lives. Me, the old me, the old Keith, I'm dead. <laughs> I was dead and buried. So Christ lives in me. And my life is hidden by God in Christ. That is where my life is hidden. Satan, you want to see where my life is? My life is hidden by God in Christ. And he's faithful enough and he will keep me and present me on that day holy. Holy. That day, my friends, you will be presented holy because you're not keeping your salvation. That's why Paul was so much agitated with people of Galatia when they have been saved by faith and now they want to keep their salvation by their works. They're saying, oh, I need to do, to do this so that I keep my salvation. If, if I don't give to the poor, if I don't do this, I, I will lose my salvation. He told them, you foolish Galatians who bewitched you that you started by the Spirit and now you want to be fulfilled by the flesh? Did you receive the, your salvation by the works of the law? Or did you receive it by faith? Then keep the faith. Okay. Let's go back to what we were talking about. In his public ministry, Jesus spoke of being sent to the Jews. He focused his efforts on them. He was the Jewish Messiah and he had come in part to strengthen Judah and save the tribes of Joseph. 
As the Bible tells us in the book of Zechariah 10 verse 6, it says, And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to bless them, for I have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God, and will heal them. On one occasion, Jesus seemed to rebuff the pleas of a Gentile woman, though he later helped her. Think about this. Why was he refusing to help a gentle woman, Jesus? At some point, of course, he did that, but he later helped her. Because he was not coming for the Gentiles. As the Gentiles, we, we, he was not coming for us because he had, God had already chosen the Jews for himself. So Jesus was coming to the Jews. Now listen to this. In um, the book of Matthew chapter 15 verse uh, 21 to 28 it says then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon and behold a woman of Canaan uh, came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying I ha have mercy on me O Lord thou son of David my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil but he answered her not a word and his disciples came and besought him saying send her away for she cries after us but he answered and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lordship of the house of Israel. Are, are you seeing what Jesus is saying here? Jesus is saying, no, I'm not sent, but only, I'm, on, I'm not sent to the Gentiles. I'm only sent to the house of Israel, to the children of Abraham only. I'm sent only to the Jews. Jesus' message was only to the Jews. Why? Because they were the chosen people. That is what he was preaching after then uh, verse 25 says then came she and worshipped him saying lord help me but he answered and said it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it out to dogs you see he's calling the gentile dogs because we were of no reputation to god but later on we see god had mercy on us the gentiles and he saved us which we are not supposed to be saved. It is through Abraham that the whole world has been blessed. It is through the Jews that we are blessed, that we got salvation. Look at verse 27. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. This woman was a Gentile. She was a Gentile. And uh, Jesus did not want to help her. Why? Because uh, he was not sent to the Gentiles. He was sent to the house of Israel. But of course we see later because of her faith. Because the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. Her faith pleased God. Our Lord Jesus. And also when you look at Matthew 10 verse 5 it says... These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Why is he telling the apostles not to go in the way of the Gentiles? Because salvation was only for the Jews. It is by grace that you are saved. We got what we did not deserve. What is grace? Grace is getting what you don't deserve. My friends, we don't deserve salvation. We got it by grace. God had mercy on us and he saved us. Jesus predicted that uh, repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in Christ's name to all nations, beginning where? At Jerusalem. Luke 24 verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. The gospel of the kingdom was to be a blessing to the whole world, but uh, it was natural that it first be proclaimed to Israel. Okay, why? Because they were the chosen uh, a nation of God. But when Paul speaks of the gospel bringing salvation first to the Jew, in Romans 1.16, he alludes to the special relationship the Jews had to the Messiah. The, 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 the Christ was the son of David and the, the hope of the Messiah 
had long been held by the Jews. That hope was held by the Jews. Look at the book of Luke, uh, chapter 2, verse 38. And she, and uh, she coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for the redemption. In where? In Jerusalem. So the hope of the Messiah was held with the Jews. The Gentiles did not wait for any Messiah. So it was very important for the gospel to go to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. So when the gospel of Christ was first proclaimed, Jews had a priority. We see this prioritization in Paul's first missionary journey. Every time they would come to a new city, Paul and Barnabas would preach in the synagogue to the Jews in that city. In uh, Pisidian, Antioch, they were also opposed by the unbelieving Jews that missionaries uh, said in uh, the book of Acts chapter 13 verse uh, 46, we had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and you do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. You see the point here? So Paul, in the first missionary journey, he was he was going specifically to go and preach to the Jews. But when they denied, he turned to the Gentiles. And the persecution in Antioch continued, and Paul and Barnabas were eventually expelled. So they went to the next town in verse 51. And uh, there are several important things to note about Paul's statement that uh, the power of God is in the gospel. All right? It brings salvation to everyone who believes, first the Jew and then the Gentile. And uh, first, God did not seize saving Jews in order to save Gentiles. No. I'm sure some people may be wondering, so did God stop saving Jews? No. He's still saving them, all right? In all of his missionary journeys, the Apostle Paul continued to preach first in the synagogues and God continues to desire the salvation of all the world because he told us in the book of John 3.16 that for God so loved the world. The world is the people who are here in the world, not the buildings. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever now, Jesus did not die for the Jews only. He died for whosoever, anyone who desires to be saved. You see, before Jesus was coming, when Jesus came, he said, the, the, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He wanted to start the kingdom of heaven there and then the millennial kingdom, the 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ. But when the Jews denied Jesus, the table stand. And now Jesus had to die for the sins of everyone. He said, now it, salvation is open to everyone because the Jews have denied me. They have said, okay, uh, salvation is not worthy to them. Uh, I'm not worthy for them. Then now, let me turn to everyone in the world. Whosoever will believe, I will pick whoever will believe. Whether it be Jew or it be Gentile, I will pick that. All right? That's why the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but, but that the world through him might be saved. That is the reason why God the Father sent his Son. Not to condemn, because there are people who say, Oh, Jesus came to condemn us, to tell us, Oh, you're bad here, you have lied there, you've done this. No, Jesus did not come for that. We were already condemned by the law. Moses already condemned us. He already told us, do not lie. Yeah, you see, you lied. Hey, so you, you're guilty of sin. You're guilty of death. The, the law was our schoolmaster to tell us how much of sinners we are. And after it shows us how much we are sinners, it directs us to the one who will take away our sin, who is Jesus. For those who are trying to follow the law, like... Uh, the Seventh-day Adventists, they try to say, oh, we have to follow the law. We have to follow the law. We have to keep the Sabbath. We have to do this, my friends. And the law is a killer. The law just shows you how much of a sinner you are. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, right? And the Bible says in John 3, verse 18, He that believes is not condemned. 
When you believe in Jesus, you cannot be condemned. You're no longer a sinner. But he that believeth not is condemned already because the law tells you you're a sinner. All right? You're condemned already. And 1 Timothy 2, 4, it says, Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? That's what Jesus wants. He wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge. You see, you can only be saved when you come to the knowledge. You understand, you hear and understand. Sinner's prayer does not save. When you just say, oh, I'm saved because I said a prayer. My friends, you'll go to hell with your prayer. You're saved by coming to the knowledge of the truth. You understand this is the truth that Jesus died for my sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So this is the truth. This is what Jesus did for me. Once you understand that, then immediately it gets into your heart and you believe that fact. For sure, Jesus died for my sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that's where we get the gospel. And once you understand that, and you believe it. My friends, you become righteous. Immediately, you don't need to do anything. You become righteous. And confession is just basically confessing what already is in your heart. You see, you cannot confess what you don't know. There are many people who say, Oh, I, 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 will, just, I will just confess this. And uh, you don't even know the gospel. What are you confessing? How do you confess what you don't know? Can you go to a court of law and start confessing things that you don't know? You start saying, oh, a, a magistrate, I, I think I saw that thief. And you never saw the thief. You're a liar. You're a perverted liar. You should be sent to jail because you're a liar. You're confessing what you don't know. First, we have to know the gospel. Then we confess what we know. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. There has to be something in your heart that you want to confess and say, I now believe that Jesus died for my sins. He was buried and rose again. The third day, as is written in the scriptures. Salvation has been given to us. It is for us to pick. For those people who say, oh, Jesus saved me. He already saved you. It is for you to pick that salvation by faith. You say, Jesus, I now receive that atonement, that payment you did for my sins by faith. All right, let's go back to a story. Secondly, Jews are neither better or worse than Gentiles. No one is better or, or worse. No. Everyone needs the Savior. And in Christ, all, uh, uh, all are equal. Everyone is equal to Christ now. There is no Jew, there is no Gentile in Christ Jesus. Okay? Colossians um, 310 uh, to 11 it says and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him where there is neither Jew uh, Greek or Jew circumcision or uncircumcision barbarian Scythian bond or free but Christ is all in all right now you cannot say oh because I'm a Jew I think I'm going to heaven straight mm -mm, mm -mm. now there is no Jew there is no Gentile Everything has been opened. Now we need to be saved. If a Jew does not believe in Jesus and he dies today, he will go straight to hell. If a Gentile does not believe today and he dies, he will go straight to hell. If a Jew believes today in Jesus, he will go straight to heaven. Likewise with the Gentile. So, there is no Jew or Gentile in Christ Jesus. And that verse in Colossians 3.10 reminds us that we have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of his creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Sitian, slave free, but Christ is all in all. And the believing Gentile is just as welcome in the family of God as the believing Jew. The Jew who has faith in Christ Jesus is just as secure in his salvation as a born-again Gentile. Finally, salvation comes the same way to both Jews and to Gentiles. It is for everyone who believes. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, 
to the Jew first and to the Greek. I'm not ashamed. Are you ashamed of the gospel? Are you sometimes ashamed and feel, oh, I don't want to talk about Jesus because, you know, people can can think negatively at, about me at my workplace when I start mentioning Jesus. <laughs> you should not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Jesus is the only way of salvation. Even them, those who you are ashamed after, one day they will cry and say, I wish you are not ashamed. I wish you told me the truth. Because the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. That's the only name, the name of Jesus which can save us. And John 14 verse 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Nobody comes to the Father but through Jesus regardless of one's heritage it doesn't matter if you're a jew you're a gentile you're from where your passion you're greek you anything jesus is the way paul said in the book of uh, acts chapter 20 verse 21 he said i have declared to both jews and greeks that they must turn to god in repentance and have faith in our lord jesus i've spoken to both jews and gentiles to repent I'm not telling the Jews to repent, uh, the, the Gentiles to repent, but the, the Jews, that they stay because, you know, they are, no. I've spoken to all, all right? And Galatians 3, 26 to 28 says, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. All of us through faith. Not through works, not through a prayer, not through going to church, not through stopping sinning, but through faith. You should know whom you have believed. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew or Gentile, neither slave or free, nor is there male and female. All of you are one in Christ Jesus. All must come to Jesus in faith for salvation. And all are equally accepted by Him when they do. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you didn't learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever you post a new Bible study lesson. And if you'd like to get saved or you need a step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, keithmuwaki.com, for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.